Uh, well, welcome to the last step. It looks like we lost Camus for a moment, so there may have been a uh, technical difficulty there. But uh, you missed our beautiful introduction. But this is the last step, and I'm Jeffrey. And this is my very unspecial guest, Frank. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, uh, I'm going to have Frank on as long as he'll be on, because we, uh, we've had this connection since he showed up, because we both shared you know, this journey of the 12 steps and bringing that to more people, even in the community. As I've shared in the past weeks, people would ask me because I would speak rather quickly or mention the fifth step or just something that I'm so familiar with. And they're like, what is that? So I'll try to, you know, explain some of this stuff if it does come up. But uh, yeah, I put out an intention last, uh, basically a week ago about, okay, I want the show to go this way or, you know, I want it to happen like this and just to kind of put the prayer out. And it was to reach more people, to reach, you know, it's not about alcohol in our the book I read is, you know, it says alcohol is but a symptom. You know, we have to get down to causes and conditions. And, you know, it wasn't the drugs, it wasn't any of those things. So it was reaching the broader audience with, you know, addiction to hypothetical thinking, addiction to judgment and all this. And the very next day after I posted that on my, my prayer board there, uh, David spoke at the online retreat and he talked about the linear time anonymous. I went, oh, there's the answer. We can start linear time anonymous. And what is it, you know? It's just this idea, this addiction to think we have so many choices, you know. And yeah, so I actually, this past week, I, I went to a few meetings since, since the show started. I hadn't been in a while and another member of the community and then Frank showed up and we, we went together and it was beautiful. You know, we heard some great things there and a woman there shared a movie, a new Bill W. movie. And for those of you who don't know, Bill W. was the guy who wrote the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, which was you know, touted as one of the best spiritual books, top 10 of the 21st century and all this because it had reached so many people. So I watched it um, this past week and it was really, it was called Bill W. The Force Behind Alcoholics Anonymous, but it really showed his process and like how he came to it. But I was blown away by one scene that I actually shared with Frank when we got together for lunch. And it was this discussion they had about, you know, what was alcoholism and all this, and they can never figure it out. And <clears throat> Dr. Silkworth wrote this letter, you know, about what he perceived the problem to be. And they talked about what they did with alcoholics prior to Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, now doctors say, oh, you should go to a meeting and all this. Well, prior to that, they actually, for the hardcore alcoholics, they actually lobotomized them. And I was like, and it showed this scene, and they were so shocking to see these people, like, you know, pretty much vegetables. And I was like, I thought I knew what, what a lobotomy was, but I looked it up. I'm like, what is it? And it's actually the removal of part of the, front, the prefrontal cortex. And I'm like, well, what does that do, the prefrontal cortex? And it's actually responsible for planning, decision-making, and personality development. And I was like, <laughs> I was like okay, now we're getting somewhere. Like, so then, you know, it's funny because when I read the big book, my sponsor was like, just look up the words, even if you think you know them. Because as some of the people shared today, there's a constant journey of I don't know. So the words I think I know, I would look up as well. So I actually looked up planning. And this was the definition. And when I read it, I was like, because in Alcoholics Anonymous, they actually talk about, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. You know, that's just a, a comment they always make. So planning is the process of thinking. So right there, I should be alerted because, you know, the, they say in our book also, the alcoholic, the disease of an alcoholic, the problem centers in the mind. So it says the process of thinking about the activities required to achieve, achieve a desired goal. So when I read that, I was like, because all we're doing by, we're doing the opposite. Guidance is basically the direct opposite of this, <laughs> this quote. It's like trying to settle into, you know, what would you have me do and not think about, you know, what I would, what I would actually do. So it was funny because I started, we were praying on, you know, what was it? And we never come up with a topic for the meeting or for the, for the show until the last minute. And I woke up this morning. It was like planning. Maybe it's just about planning. And what does planning bring me to? But this idea of that I have a decision, you know, and this whole show started with the idea of the third step, which is turning over my will in every moment. <clears throat> so, yeah, we don't know where it's going to go. Maybe it is choice. And I have a lot of things, but I wanted to... Uh, Turn it over to Frank because he had a little story he wanted to tell about a planning adventure he had, and I forget where it was. Yes, yes, it was. Um, I was uh, speaking at a meeting at an AA meeting. I was asked to speak, and there's a guy before the meeting asked me to, um, uh, you know, if I could could meet him for coffee. 
and he really needed to talk. And I had forgot that the format of this, of this meeting was actually planning what you're going to say, uh, you know, with excerpts of the book. And I completely forgot. So when we were at this uh, cafe, people came in and said, oh, Frank, what did you plan? And I said, well, oh, God, I completely forgot that I was supposed to plan. And I thought I could run up now and start, really, you know, uh, planning something. I'm going to stay with this guy. But I was guided to stay with this guy. But a thought came to me, I'd like to talk about such and such sentence in the book. I forget which one it was now, and I had no idea when the book it was. So I stayed to the last minute with the guy, went up, and there was a book there, and I opened it, and it was right on that sentence, you know. And that was actually how I opened my share. It's like, you know, there's no planning. It's absolute trust. I have to, you know, this is what I'm learning, is to trust that I have actually played no role in this. Uh, and my, my prayer is always, even before this show, you know, take me completely out of the way because I don't want to say anything that Frank has to say, you know, mm. and, uh, uh, you know, uh, actually I got this last way, last time we were on, Uta was saying, you know, replace, <laughs> replace me yeah. with you, yeah. you know, and I, that was my prayer again. I have no idea what I'm going to say. But one thing I want to say about the lobotomy, you know, because I, I, uh, I, I, sorry, you know, I interact with animals a lot, or I used to. And, you know, I used to watch them and I really envied them because that frontal cortex thing seems to be missing. There. You know, they just, they're just totally in the moment. I thought, oh, God, I wish I could be one of you guys. You know, they didn't even, they, they don't have anything. They don't worry about anything, you know. And my mentor in, in horsemanship always said, you know, there is, um, there is, uh, um, there's, there are no horses with, uh, uh, with horse problems. There's only problems with human problems, you know, and, and that, that's what we project on them. Mm. And so, um, so, so, you know, <laughs> when Jeffrey told me this yesterday, about the scene in the movie. I said, oh, let's get that lobotomy, you know. Let's but that's it. kind of... <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to get one. Like, let's go get one of those. <laughs> let's get one of that's those. That's what we're doing. But that's what we're doing. You know, that's what we're doing. And, and I'm learning more and more. I'm, I'm uh, fairly new here, but I'm learning more and more how, how it's happening, you know. And, uh, um, uh, you know, it, it's through the... Um, you know, through the, the exposure of private thoughts, you know, just expose it, expose it, expose it. And something, you know, and, and it something goes away, you know, something goes away. And I've come here a month ago and I see already everything has changed or a lot. Not, I mean, you know, it's not, but it's happening. You know, it's really happening. I think the way I thought about a certain situation before about a month ago is completely changed now. And it's not that we sit around here, you know, taking inventory and writing stuff down. We just interact with each other in function. And, this, and there's something that happens, you know. Uh, it just, so the lobotomy has oh. begun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that. And, <laughs> without having to be a vegetable. That's right. kind of the, the, That's the, downside. the thing we didn't That's like so downside. much. <laughs> we actually... <laughs> We actually were vegetables, and now we're being robotic. Yeah, yeah, now, now we're, we're, we're awake. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's funny because when you talk about animals, I remember being in the rooms and this talk of step three again, it was like turning my will over. And I thought about that. I thought about these animals. I'm like, they don't have, they're all on God's will. They do what they, they want to eat. They fly and they eat something. They want to do something else. It's all this guidance. And I remember this idea of like, okay, that's all I have to do. And I guess this is what it looks like, you know. And it's the same thing that I planning in all of this is to th think I know. I opened up the book this morning and I opened it up to the test of truth. And that first line is just like, if that could be my prayer constantly, it's like the one thing you need to learn is that you do not know, you know, and even after they wrote the big book, it was at the end, they said, we admit we know very little. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's this idea that they were talking about earlier that Ken and Nicholas made this idea that I know my best interest or any of that has to be continually turned over, you know, in every moment. And, yeah, that's why the third step to me is like this this pivotal point in my I call it my recovery. Now it's recovery from the world. 
it's not recovery from a symptom. Yes, it, that's what it is. But, you know, it is, I mean, the whole program, and I think that's what a lot of people, I, I talk for myself, I missed it for years. It is the recovery from the world. And, um, mm. you know, when you look at this step where it says, um, uh, you know, hand my life, my will and my life over to the care of God. What else is there? There's nothing mm. else. That, I mean, yeah. if you take that literally, that's exactly what we're doing. Even that, but, the explanation of that, when people tell you, when my sponsor would tell me, what is my will in my life? It's my thoughts and my actions. And of course, right. we know that it all starts with our thoughts. And I had to be explained that, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and then we go into the 11th step eventually where it's praying only for, you know, improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And that, you know, took me a long time to even practice that. Mm. And I go to, you know, now I go to meetings to just share my experience, having practiced that and what has happened, you know, and how the awakening, because it does talk about an awakening, in 12, it says, having had an awakening, we can now share the message, uh, carry the message to others. But if I, uh, I realized if I haven't had this awakening, I have nothing to share, you know. Mm. So, um, so I realized how long it takes, uh, you know, uh, to even realize that the 12 steps is a very radical spiritual yeah. program. Drastic. You know? it's, it's, it's very drastic. and. Um, and it doesn't leave room for, for much else. But it's also being practiced a lot. And it was by me, by just going to meetings and sharing a bit and doing a bit of service. But that doesn't, mm. that doesn't give you freedom. No. It does not. There was so, even, yeah, there was some people at the meeting that I went to this past week and with years of recovery, but still battling with other, you know, the compulsion and obsession actually just shifts to something else. And, you know, even the people in that meeting, they were like, and the idea, it was funny because I went with someone else uh, here from community and we went and I had given her one of my books and it had a bookmark in there with all the topics or, you know, themes in the big book and it shows the pages it's on. So before she prays and she flips it open and she looks and she shows it to me and it was insanity was the word she looked up and it, in the book it cost, talks about the, um, the, lack of, uh, the lack of proportion of the ability to think straight is what they define it in the book. And of course she shuts the book, they start the meeting and the woman says, okay, today's topic is insanity. And she's like, <laughs> oh my God. And they actually went around the room sharing and when it came to me, it was like, you know, I'm in prayer and like, okay, whatever you would have me say. And when I said, you know, I didn't understand what the insanity was when I first got in and I, I actually said, I said, insanity is actually thinking the world's causative because in, in the step book, it talks about it. It's step 10. It says the spiritual axiom says, whenever there's a problem, the problem's with me, but it's actually taking it deeper because there's, even when I watched that movie with Bill Wilson and not to take anything away from the program or what he did, but he suffered from depression, depression for years. And there was one scene where he talked about, he had all this depression and it was like time magazine wanted him on the front cover and they wanted to use his name and everything. And it was against the tradition. So he wouldn't do it. And he had a bunch of depression come up after that because of this false empathy. He actually thought, he's like, you know how many people I could have reached that are going to die because I didn't take this step, you know? And it's like taking that whole program to a different level is the course of miracles for me. Like it was taking it to this whole different level. So, And the other thing, you know, I'm realizing also what we do, you know, uh, I mean, we learn to be of service in AA, but that, uh, you know, it's becoming more and more, clear i'm not doing it for anybody but my myself you know it's for my everything i do is for my own healing because there's really nobody out there you know everything that uh everybody i see or i meet it's just my mind playing out mm. you know and people who trigger guilt it, it, it's not it's my mind triggering the guilt you know and i'm just seeing it in the form of people and and uh and it's amazing you know how how this is all unfolding to me uh the the um you know and and the steps was a really good introduction you know also to expose private thoughts with the fourth step which is you know we make yeah. a a moral inventory and then we admit it to God and to another human being and it was extremely liberating so that gives gave me a big uh, I was talking uh, with Soren yesterday on the way home because I shared something with him pretty intense after the movie we saw 
And then I said, you know, I have this advantage that I learned to do this already 34 years ago mm -hmm. that you had to expose, you know, otherwise you're not doing the step. So that's, I'm very grateful that I, I don't have, you know, I just can regurgitate yeah. anything. And yeah, that's right. it. Frank's actually, you know, it's, Frank's actually talking about the fifth step, and that was the one I mentioned. And then Suzanne was like, what is that one? And it's admitted to God, to ourselves, and another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. And in the book at that point, they call it wrongs. And then later it starts calling it mistakes because we believe that we yeah. have done something wrong at right. that point, you know? And I remember the first fifth step I did and I'll tell you, it was just, and you get the same experience here being in an expression session. And I remember one of my friends, Murph, I love this guy. We had so much fun. And when I was making my transition this way, he's like, Oh man, we could have reached so many alcoholics together and all this. And he's like, just saying like that, what I was like, I didn't like really tell him, but I'm like, you don't understand what I'm stepping into. I'm in a constant, constant fifth step. It's literally, we're in a fifth step all the time. And I remember the first experience I had, and it was this uplifting experience of, you know, just sharing all these things I thought I had done wrong. And I did quite a few and then receiving them when I had these people and I had so many miracles of people sharing these things that are like seemingly like super dark. And, you know, there was some sharing last night about things that had happened on a retreat when David was sharing all these people at seven minutes to like unload oh, yeah. all their stuff. And I was like, oh, that's fifth steps. Like they're doing quick mini fifth steps. And it's like, it's so amazing to actually be part of that. And that's what we do like over and over. Here. Yeah. And it's so, so, it's really, um, it's so inspiring. And that's why I was able to tell Soren something in the car that I never told anybody, you know, I thought I was going to take it to my grave and I just said, you know, here it is. <laughs> after the movie <laughs> so this is you know that's what i'm here for it's so healing and there's so much stuff coming up in my life you know and and just these synchronicities and you know and and there's a lesson you know everything that's happening is in my best interest and sometimes you know so I, I have a bit of a problem here in Mexico with all these ra radios blaring, you know, and I'm thinking, <laughs> how is that in my best interest? But it always is, you know, and then I, whoa, there it is, you know, got to forgive this. And, and, and so, so, you know, it could be this or, or anything, but it's constantly, it's in my face, uh, uh, constantly. And, and now I'm beginning to be aware of it. So I said, just pay attention. What everybody says, what, what anything that pops up now, because it's there for your healing and um and 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 it's intense you know it's mm. just non-stop it's non-stop mm. and some of it is a little bit um is you know okay it makes me cringe a bit and others just comes naturally so it's not all mm. like this painful process you know uh some of it is painful <laughs> Frank's actually first week here was at the uh, the adventure in the heart awakening, and he stayed in a hotel down by the Malachi. I think it was Holy Week or something, and there was a stage right in front of his hotel. <laughs> Couldn't he sleep at all. But what did it do? It was it like Coachella, you know. It was a Coachella type stage. Yeah. It wasn't like a little. It was huge, and it was blaring till four thirty in the morning. So I came to a retreat, and this is blaring, you know. What is that? How is that in my best interest? No, so he I hasn't got, left. I, I got, I'm still here. I got, <laughs> I got dressed. I went outside and I had, I see, you know, and they, they, they had different acts, you know, so there was a rock act and there was pop act and it was, you know, but all really uh, not, not musically, not very good. And so, uh, <laughs> sorry, the judgment, but so I go out, I'm pissed off, you know, and, and I, I, um, I see, and there was a, a charo act, you know, charos are the Mexican cowboys. And I'm thinking, whoa, you know, it's 3.30 in the morning, I see all these Mexican cowboys. And I have so much forgiveness to do with Mexican cowboys because I used to <laughs> rescue horses that were going to Mexican cowboys that would, you know, do pretty bad stuff to them. And so I had this whole thing. I said, here, that's, <laughs> that's what you have to do. There's like 500 charas in front of your window uh, begging for forgiveness. <laughs> you know? And, and it was intense. Trying for, trying for a four step on the Mexican charas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, it's, everything happens for purpose. Since I'm here, <laughs> I, I realize it since I'm here. 
That's it. I had to correct that. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's, yeah. that's actually me. Uh, I gave Frank my other copy of This Purpose is the Only Choice, which came from some of David's talks. And I read it every month. And that's what it comes down to, because this idea of addiction to linear time and all this or all these choices that I think are presented to me, there really is only one, you know. I need to be reminded, it says in there, that one line from, I think it's 138. I need to be reminded that I think a thousand choices are before me, but there is only one. And that, that seems to be a choice. And it's the same thing with all of this. It's like, even with the third step, it's like making that decision over and over again. So, And it's also realizing that it's all happening in the mind. Mm. You know, it's nowhere else. There is, it's all in the mind and it's there for healing. And anything that I do to try to fix it is going to delay it, <laughs> make it worse, probably. I don't know. But, uh, you know, the dream gets worse. So I have to, I can only address it in the mind. You know, like mm. this forgiveness thing. I can uh, uh, rescue horses till the cows come home, you know. Right. But it doesn't, it's not going to do it, you know. Um, so so um, that, uh, that it's on, an, otherwise it's level confusion. Mm. And it's becoming more and more clear what that means. And also when I, you know, it's, it's, um, it's also now a challenge to go to meetings because there's a lot of people that need help. And I have to realize, you know, I'm not there to save them. And that's a big one. Yeah. That's a big one. I'm here for me. And you hear it in AA. Mm. I'm here for me only. But it's only beginning to make sense now what that really means, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I had the same thing in going to the meetings and there was certain stuff, certainly in the book, you know what I mean? There's these ideas in here that it was written by Bill, which was, he was Christian and he wrote so many things in there that I had to overlook and it was forgiveness even of the book, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a book right. that led me to, you know, the Course in Miracles. But, you know, when you talk about those Mexican chars and, you know, it's this, this page here, which is 66 and 67. And it's actually, this was one of the problems I, this is what the one area I had a problem with because this is actually after before the fifth step you have a fourth step which you make a personal inventory and you actually look and you do columns the people that you think you have and it's resentments fears and all this and you know I love this I actually read this uh, every once in a while you know if we were to live we had to be free of anger the grouch and the brainstorm I'm certainly familiar with those <laughs> we're not for us. They may be the dubious luxury of normal men, but for alcoholics, these are poison. We turn back to our list for it held the key to the future. Were we prepared to look at it from an entirely different angle? That's what we do with the instrument for peace for it with Spiri. We just shift our perspective. We began to see that the people in the world really dominated us in that state, the wrongdoing of others fancied or real I actually crossed off real in my other book here had the power to actually kill. How could we escape? We saw that these re resentments must be mastered. And when I saw that, I was like, oh, like this is something I can put my energy into mastering my resentments. You know what I mean? And like, really, that's all it is, is like this mind watching is seeing it come up. But the problem I had here is they have a sick man prayer that they use here. And it was like the goal when I read this, I was like, wait, that doesn't make sense when I first read it, because it was this idea of looking at the other people and say, this is a sick man. And I had had that experience. I'm like, well, this means I'm sick. Like if I continue to do that. So it was this idea of the overlook, like David said it 20, 15 times last night when we watched that movie, this idea of just overlooking that to see the Christ within. Mm -hmm. And it's like, so this I actually see as a step in the process because there's an amen after the seventh step is where we hand over, you know, we, with humility, which is a seven step uh, spiritual principle that we go there. And that's why we walk and then we make our amends and we do everything. Then when we get to 10, 11 and 12, which is the vigilance, diligence, perseverance, spirituality, and service, then we don't go back. We actually don't say this prayer ever again because I don't see other people as sick anymore right. because I'm already under the spiritual axiom. So, Yeah, the sick man is just a, a tool to, to show compassion. Right. I get, you know, but there, if I see uh, you know, the sick man anyway is just in my mind again. Right. You know? So um, I, you know, with this work, I unsee the sickness. Mm. And and yes, I heard that loud and clear when David was saying it yesterday. You know, just see past past the body, right. and now even see past the mind. Yeah. You know, so there's the work. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's 
we've upped the game a bit. <laughs> yeah, so me and Frank have been reading this Purpose is the Only Choice, and I think, oh, this is the other. This is the original edition, so I'm not familiar with the pages. But it was that idea, you know, they talk, he talks about in here, it's a conversation with a friend, and they actually go into this idea of restlessness, and what is restlessness? And we have in our book, it's called Restless, Irritable, and Discontented. That's our normal state mm -hmm. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and that's why we would drink or use drugs or whatever it was to take that away. You know, And it worked. That was the solution. But this restlessness is actually the belief that I have all these choices before me. And I don't know which one's going to make me happy. So how could I ever be at peace? That's actually until I look at it, each one, and then bring it back to actually purpose is the only choice. And it walks you through it. I mean, I shared it with Jason the first time I read it. I'm like, this book is like blew me away. And he's like, yeah, I had a mystical experience the first time I read it. So now I read it once a month and have a mini mystical experience each time I read it. So Yeah, the only purpose is really what is our true nature. You know, what is, what is the, the mm -hmm. only choice is this one choice. So that doesn't leave a choice. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, to go with the true I that I am. And the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous is, is clear. I am the child of God. Mm. That makes me of God nature. You know, that makes me spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Christ. So that's my only choice. And the Christ is no future. So then I don't have to plan. That's so that, that's, the, the, that's, that's the purpose. The planning you know? is over. And for this, I have to develop a trust, mm -hmm. you know, and all this is happening in the 11th step when I get to, um, you know, make that connection. And once that connection is there, like, wow. <laughs> you know, what else is there? It's what else is there? And how can I not trust that? You know, so that's my only choice. I'll actually read that um, because I think maybe we'll. I wanted to go into a few pages of this because it, the way this book actually explains what Nicholas and Andy were talking about and it's how to follow guidance. And there's four pages in here that, that talk about it, but I'll leave you with this today. It's just one paragraph and it's in the 11th, so right before the 11th step, after the 10th step, which the 10th step is continue to take personal inventory and practice the principles. And then the 11th is sought through prayer and med meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. But it says this, much has already been said about receiving strength, inspiration, and direction from him who has all knowledge and power. If we have carefully followed directions, we have begun to sense the flow of his spirit into us. To some extent, we have become God conscious. We have begun to develop this vital sixth sense. So maybe we'll go into those pages next time on the last step. <laughs> so. Yeah, thanks for having us. Did you have anything else you wanted to? No, thank you. Sure. Okay. We'll uh, see you uh, maybe next week, I think. We're back on. And uh, yeah, until then, we love you.